Hello everyone and welcome back to Turn the Page, the channel that brings you biblical truth through fact and fiction. Uh, today's topic's going to be fun. Uh, we're talking about something that hits pretty close to home, uh, just over our heads actually. I'm going to be breaking down chapter 2 from my book, Constellations, Biblical Cosmology, and Why It Matters. So uh, go ahead and put your seatbelts on, set aside your preconceived notions of where it is that we live, and prepare to have your current understanding shaken to its core. Guys, the title of chapter two is What About the Firmament? So that's our discussion topic for today. Uh, we're going to be breaking down extensively what the firmament is and how that impacts our current understanding of cosmology. So uh, let's go ahead and dig right in. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. It's Genesis 1-6 from the King James Version. Now, I want to break down the firmament just a little more in depth with Scripture. We're going to look at day two of creation um, from the Lexham English version of the Bible. I believe it gives a little clearer understanding of what's going on here. And God said, Let there be a vaulted dome, or firmament, in the midst of the waters, and let it cause a separation between the waters. So God made the vaulted dome, or firmament, and he caused a separation between the waters which were under the vaulted dome and between the waters which were over the vaulted dome. And it was so. And God called the vaulted dome, or the firmament, heaven. And there was evening and there was morning, a second day. There is our first really big roadblock. The word firmament shows up in verse 6. We barely even get started, and already there is something that requires some major explanation. Now, this has naturally been explained many different ways in order to make it fit into people's preconceived notions regarding creation. I have personally heard from many sources that firmament means sky or expanse. The problem with those definitions is that they are wrong. When speaking about the waters above and the waters below, I have also heard some explanations that are comical. I have been told that the waters above are the moisture in the atmosphere, and also that the waters above means clouds. Again, the problem is that those definitions are wrong. They are easily proven wrong when we do a deep study on the word firmament. We'll talk about the waters above later. The word firmament is so interesting because it is a very specific word that was chosen. Some Bible translations have gone with man's opinion regarding the firmament and replaced the word with sky or expanse. This is simply wrong and shows that someone has attempted to make the scriptures fit the current scientific model when they simply do not. There are many translations, though, that have stuck with the word firmament and some that have chosen to use a more modern term that still means the same thing, such as the complete Jewish Bible. God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the water, let it divide the water from the water. That's Genesis 1 verse 6 from the complete Jewish Bible. They replaced firmament with the word dome here because dome is a modern word that perfectly describes what a firmament really is. However, when we break down the word firmament, Using the languages of the original biblical transcripts, we unlock a clear understanding of exactly what the firmament is that God created. Okay, so we have the Hebrew word rakia, which means extended surface, solid, expanse, as if beaten out, an absolute construct, vault of heaven or firmament regarded by Hebrews as solid and supporting waters above it. Is from the root word raka, which means to beat, stamp, beat out, or spread out. Now, the Hebrew translation is what the original text would have used because Hebrew was the language at the time. However, we know that as time went on and civilizations progressed, the Hebrew was eventually translated into the Greek. 
as the Hebrew was translated into Greek, the word chosen to replace rakia was stereoma. This is another interesting word choice because it has a very specific and similar meaning. Stereoma means the following. That which has been made firm, the firmament, that which furnishes a foundation, firmness or steadfastness. As you can see, none of these definitions work with our current model. This would indicate that a solid barrier was created over the earth on day two of creation. I'm sure you can see the problem here because modern day science would tell us that no such construct exists. So let's dig a little deeper into the firmament with two more modern translations of the word. In Latin, the word for firmament is firmamentum, which means the following. Strengthening, support, prop, stay, or firmament. And then finally, we come to the English word, which is firmament. And it means the following. The heavens or the sky especially when referred to as a tangible thing or a divider. So that takes care of the main definitions of the word firmament. But however, we can also look to other scripture regarding the firmament in order to support the fact that it is a solid, tangible divider. We don't need to rely upon definitions alone. The beautiful thing about truth and the perfection of God's holy scriptures is that there are multiple witnesses within the text itself that we can
glass. Are you seeing the correlation yet? There appears to be a sea of glass before the throne of God, because his throne sets upon the other side of the firmament, which is a solid barrier that is clear like glass. You know, you can probably imagine the problems that this causes for the current heliocentric model. The firmament is the real deal breaker for our standard belief system. You know, it single-handedly destroys so many aspects of what we're taught, pretty much from the time that we're old enough to look up at the mobile hanging over our crib all the way into adulthood. And you can't just dismiss the firmament or grossly mangle the text into the silly notion of it allegedly just being, you know, an expanse of air, gas, and the vacuum of space. Um, the words used in Hebrew, Greek, Latin, English, and frankly, every other language absolutely do not support such a definition. To suggest that they do is to willfully dismiss scriptural fact. Words mean things. And nothing about the rakia, the stereoma, the firmamentum, or the firmament conveys any other meaning than that of a firm, solid structure that separates the waters above from the waters below, and upon which the throne of God sits. So you are forced to either accept or reject the very foundation of God's throne, and guys, that is a big deal. So that pretty much sums up chapter two from the book Constellations, Biblical Cosmology, Why It Matters. Um, if there has been anything in this video that has piqued your interest, I have included a link to purchase the book down in the description of this video. Uh, of course, you can also get it from my website that's on the bottom of the screen here, rlsmithbooks.com. Um, I encourage you to pick up a copy if you have questions after watching this, if you're curious or maybe beginning to see scripture doesn't line up 100% with what we're taught, grab a copy of that book. I think that it will be a big help to you. And then when you're done reading it, share it with someone else. So guys, if you've made it to the end of this video, you know what's next. Hit that thumbs up button for me. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and then turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos as they come out. Um, I also have a link in the description of this video to my Patreon, so if you feel like you enjoy what I do and you want to support me through Patreon, that option is available for as little as $5 per month. So... I appreciate all the support that you guys already give me just from watching my videos. If you feel like you want to take it to the next step, that is available. And once again, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you next time.